Good morning everybody, this is Al with an update here. Uh, just kind of giving you uh, an idea of uh, <coughs> how the power is going while uh, we're having some a uh, little bit of sunlight. Not a whole lot, but I mean it's okay. So as you can see the meter is going back you know pretty well uh, and I only got a half one half of my panels connected this afternoon I will connect the other half so I'll have the full two kilowatts at my disposal um, so that's the meter right going on here and you'll see that it is in fact going backwards had a pretty good clip, as you can see. So, <coughs> if we look at what's going on inside, I got my uh, my switch in the uh, GTI inverter position, and you can hear that there going and you can see there's a green light on that one green light on that one green light on that one and that's an old one I've had there for a long time and I'm putting out a thousand watts uh, out to the grid right now so everything's working pretty good uh, what I will do this weekend is I'm gonna Take the resistors or the resistive load that you can see inside those filaments are heating elements. I'm going to disconnect those from the terminals here uh, for that one and this one. And I'm going to wire those through here, right, into my junction boxes here. Uh, actually, they come down this way here to this box and then uh, they go up into here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire that so that when this thing gets to the appropriate voltage uh, <coughs> then they'll discharge out by doing a dump load and instead of doing a dump load to resistors then they'll just simply dump here and that way my batteries will stay at a fixed level they'll fluctuate between probably 27 volts and 25 volts somewhere in that in the neighborhood I will play with the settings the voltage dump lock settings on those to keep them within that range and to coincide with the range that I put in here or I could do it all from here but um, it's fairly easy to do and that way I don't have to come over here and play with the switch and kind of monitor my voltage it's just going to be done automatically and I'm going to do the same thing over here uh, what I've decided to do instead of you know, feeding all my stuff uh, automatically through an automatic transit switch. I'm still going to feed everything the way that I want to. I want to do it with my 12 volt system, but instead, I'm going to use my old and trusty Coleman Air Charge controller, which works beautiful. And this guy is ready for 80, 80 amps. So at 80 amps at 12 volts, that's one kilowatt. So I'll be able to put out, you know, put this guy here, I'll be able to put out one kilowatt of energy to a dump load. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this guy here to my 12 volt DC circuit coming out of this box here. So that when this guy, uh, I can adjust a set point on it, but when he gets to about 26 volts or so, 26 and a half volts, I'm going to have it dump its load uh, to the grid tie inverters and that's how I'm going to handle that uh, actually that's a 12 volt circuit so that's going to be more like 14 volts uh, you know once it gets to about 13.6 or 13.7 volts I'll have it dump out and it'll dump out to those guys I'll get one I found one that will work at a lower voltage that's a 10 and a half volts so that'll work out pretty good for this guy here and then that'll give me uh, a continuous power draw uh, with uh, voltage monitoring so that I can 
uh, keep my batteries fully charged at all times, yet put out power continuously and save money all along the way. So uh, that's it. Just uh, giving you a quick update on how things are running. We still are, I think, putting out 1,000 watts pretty steadily here, as you can see. Uh, it's working out pretty good. And you can hear the fans on those grid tie inverters working pretty well. Uh, right now, I am pushing 17 and a half amps at 25 volts. So that's pretty good. It's still on flow charge, as you can see. It hasn't hit the point where it's, uh, you know, needs to. Uh, or it needs to go into bulk. I'm sure it'll do it here pretty soon. Today I've today I produced 56 amp hours of energy, and I still haven't hooked up the other panels, uh, other half of the panels. Uh, my uh, 12 volt circuit or my 12 volt Harbor Freight panels today have produced 33 amp hours. Uh, and I, like I said, the reason that this number is low is because I uh, didn't turn this on but a few minutes ago so this guy has stayed on float uh, you know for quite a long time today so um, the power is working out pretty good right now I'm getting right now I see 92 volts coming in from the Harbor Freight panels. Uh, oh, that was the maximum. Uh, right now there are 53 volts. Two and a half amps. And when it goes down to charge the batteries, it's uh, converting it to 12.7, 12.8 volts at 10 amps. So if you do the math, uh, 9 amps times 12 volts, you know, that's 1200 watts. Sorry, that's 120 watts. <clears throat> Not a whole lot of sunshine today. I mean, there is some light, but as you can see, it's pretty, pretty weak. <laughs> it's hardly any shade. But we're still getting lots of power. Those amorphous panels, I'm noticing low light conditions, are way more effective than the monocrystalline or the polycrystallines, which is consistent with everything that I read about this new generation of amorphous panels. Uh, the technology is far superior, especially if you live in the south, where it gets hot. The hotter these things get, the more efficient they become. Uh, unlike your ever solar panel that as the temperature increases the performance decreases uh, that's not so with these panels so for anybody that's looking for some uh, really good panels to work with they will take more room on your roof um, but they're cheaper if you have the real state in the roof or on the ground uh, I highly suggest amorphous panels you, you can there's no polycrystalline or monocrystalline that will beat them uh, and I have both I have my sharp panels which are polycrystalline panels and uh, they don't come anywhere near the uh, efficiency of output as the Harbor Fry panels which are amorphous or those uh, new DuPont panels that I have up there uh, they're just far superior so here's the sharp panels and then there's the DuPont panels and then up here are the Harbor Freight panels, and those are, are going to double. Uh, hopefully, not this weekend, but maybe next weekend I'll put those up. Anyways, uh, that's the update for today. Just uh, wanted to make sure that I could give you guys a good, uh, a good representation of uh, what's going on with the solar panels. Sorry about that. <laughs>
and uh, make sure that I can show you guys how well this thing is running. It's actually running very, very well, as you can see, They're running backwards. It's like raining power from the, from the heavens, thank God. Thank you for watching, take care.